In this video, we'll be continuing our look at vectors. We'll be showing how to resolve a vector into its components. So in this video, we will be resolving a vector into components. Now, in the previous video, we showed that basically two perpendicular vectors, two perpendicular vectors can be added to produce a resultant, which is a single vector which produces the same effect as those two combining vectors, right? And the resultant, of course, um, is usually given at some angle, either to the horizontal or to the vertical, right? Now, we can actually do the reverse. We can take a single vector, which is say acting at some angle to the horizontal, and we can actually decompose it or we can into its perpendicular components. And when we do this, we say that the vector has been resolved into its components. Now, as we mentioned before, the size of a triangle can be represented by any vector. So let's say for instance, suppose we have a force F acting at some angle theta to the horizontal, right? So let's say we have a force F which is acting at some angle theta to the horizontal. Now this force will basically have an effect in the X or the horizontal direction. It will also have an effect in the Y or the vertical direction. What exactly does this mean? Now let's say this force is acting on an, on an object which is allowed to move. This object will not only move horizontally, it will also move vertically as well. So we say that basically this force will have an effect in the horizontal direction, it will also have an effect in the vertical direction, right? So we can therefore basically resolve this force into its components by forming a right angle triangle. So we can form the horizontal, the base of the triangle, and we can also form the vertical, the height of the triangle. And this right of here, of course, will be a right angle. Now, this force will have a component in the horizontal direction. Let's call it Fx. And it will also have a component in the vertical or the y direction. And let's call it Fy. Right? So what we will do is to express each of these components in terms of the actual force F and the angle theta. Right? So to do this, we must consider trig ratios because we're dealing with a right angle triangle. So since we have the angle theta, we're concerned with the horizontal components, which would be the adjacent of the angle, side adjacent to the angle. We'll be dealing with, concerned with, of course, the vertical component, the side opposite to the angle, and of course, the force itself, the hypotenuse. So let's look at the horizontal component, Fx, right? Now, the aim is to express each component in terms of the force F, which represents the hypotenuse of the triangle. And so therefore, in choosing a trig ratio, it must include the particular component and the force F. So since we're talking about the adjacent and the hypotenuse, for this component, we'll use cosine, cos. So we'd say that cos theta is equal to adjacent fx over hypotenuse f and from which we get that fx is equal to f cos theta. So we see that this horizontal component is given as the product of the force f and the cosine of the angle theta. Now let's examine the vertical component fy. Now since we're talking about the vertical component this component is, of course, is opposite to the angle. And we're dealing with the component representing the side opposite to the angle, as well as the hypotenuse. So this, of course, means you're going to be using the trig ratio, which deals with opposite, and the hypotenuse, which, of course, is sine. And so we can basically say that sine theta is equal to the opposite, Fy, divided by the hypotenuse, F. And from which we see that Fy is equal to F 
sine theta. So what we see is that this vertical component, Fy, is given as the product of the force F and the sine of the angle theta. Now, even though we've expressed these components in terms of the force and the particular trig ratio of the angle, um, we need to be careful when dealing with the angle. So sometimes students tend to memorize um, the components, but of course, that doesn't always work out because the angle could have been changed. So for instance, in this case, the angle was given to the respect to the horizontal. And therefore, in that case, the horizontal component is in terms of the cosine of the angle, and the vertical component was given in terms of the sine of the angle. So usually what we say is that the component adjacent to the angle is in terms of the sine of the angle, and sorry, the cosine of the angle, and the other component would be in terms of the sine of the angle. Now let's say, for instance, we were given the angle with respect to the vertical instead. Now let's call that angle alpha. So what we'll do is we'll express the, each component in terms of the angle alpha, and of course we'll show that they're um, equivalent to what we got before. So in terms of this angle, let's deal with um, x, or the horizontal component. So if we're dealing with this angle, then this side becomes the opposite, and of course this is still the hypotenuse. So to do, deal with fx, we use sine. And so we say that sine alpha is equal to the horizontal component fx over y. And from that we get that fx is equal to f sine alpha. So in this case, the horizontal component is given in terms of the sine of the angle alpha. Now, if we're talking about the, um, the vertical component, then this side with respect to the angle alpha will now be the adjacent. And so we're looking for a trig ratio which deals with the adjacent as well as the hypotenuse, and that of course is cos. So we'll say that cos alpha is equal to the adjacent Fy over F. And from that, we get that Fy is equal to F cos alpha. Right? Now, you might be tempted to believe or to think that these will get, give different values. But of course, for those of you who did um, trigonometry, I know the relationship between what we call um, complementary angles. Then you know that basically if two angles are complementary, meaning that they add to give 180 degrees, the sine of one angle is equal to the cosine of the other. What exactly does this mean? It simply means that because this is a right angle triangle, this is 90 degrees of course, it means that alpha plus theta equals 90 90 degrees, right. Complementary angles, of course, they add to give 90 degrees, not 180, sorry. All right. So complementary angles add to give 90 degrees. And it therefore means that the sine of one angle is equal to the cosine of the other. So this would mean that sine alpha is equal to cos theta and vice versa. So cos alpha is equal to sine theta. And so therefore, these expressions for the horizontal and the vertical components, even if given in terms of cos of theta or sine of alpha, they of course will be equal, right? So we always remember when it comes to resolving a vector into its components, the component adjacent to the angle is given in terms of the cosine of the angle. So we see fx is f cos theta, right? And the other component is given in terms of the sine of the angle. So therefore fy in terms of theta would be f sine theta. Similarly, if we're talking about the angle alpha, then the component adjacent to that angle is fy, and therefore fy is equal to f cos alpha, whereas fx would be equal to f sine alpha.